me dream neath the sky. This old heart keeps on beating, repeating fond echoes of the brave and the bold riding seventies, the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. No, thanks. You sure you're gonna come back to redeem your gun? Sure will, why? I wouldn't lose those guns for anything. They belong to my old man. I'll be back in 30 days or so, after my first paycheck. It's a nice outfit. The guns don't do me no good, you know. When I sell saddles, I have to get the money for them. I know you're doing me a big favor, and I sure appreciate it. But I couldn't get the job without this saddle. I'll be back. I guess I could take your word for it. How far is it from here to Langtree? I thought you were heading for a ranch. I am, 10 miles this side of Langtree. You got three or four hour ride into Langtree from here. But there's a cutoff at Twin Rocks. Straight south? That's right. Thanks again. Hey. Yeah? How's it that you didn't have a saddle for your horse before? I just bought him from a man here in town. You sure are suspicious. These days you have to be. All right, adios. You're right, Mr. Doyle, it's one of yours. Get down off of that horse. Now, wait a second. What's this all about? You know what it's all about. If I did, I wouldn't be asking. You stole that horse from me. I did no such thing. I paid hard cash for him. So you bought him, did you? Hold it, Morongo. Let me put a slug through him, Mr. Doyle. That'll cure him of stealing horses. No, we'll do this right. We'll hang him. How can we do that? There ain't a tree big enough in sight. Of course, we can always tie a rope around his neck and let a horse drag him. I said we are gonna hang him. We'll take him into Langtree. It's the third one of these, isn't it? That's right. The rest of the canned stuff out there? Yeah, I think so. See, potatoes, flour, soap, vinegar, vinegar. We've been leaving this cheese around here. Hmm. That's pretty good. Remember to order some more of that. What else? Give me that vinegar funnel. How about the coffee? It's not out there. Yeah, we we'll get that later. This your cheese? Took it out of the rat trap so I could get time to reset it. What's the matter? Don't tell me you. Oh no! Why don't you tell all of these things? You can get the blue bonnet plague from them rats. How did I know you sent me outside? That's the reason I left it there. Was there a rat in that trap? No, there wasn't. You wouldn't tell me now, even if there was. Why do we have to set these rat traps around here anyway? Where's that dang cat? She's got problems of her own. How much coffee do we take? There's about a half a bag over here. Summertime, why don't they keep these things closed? <laughs> Is there any poison in that cheese, Jeff? You told me not to use any because of the cats. I'm glad I did. What's the matter? Don't you feel good? Oh, just kind of bilious, I guess. Stomach must be a little upset. You see that? I sure did. Wouldn't that take the frosting off a cake? You feel better? Yeah, considerably. <laughs> Wonder where the mother is. 
She's probably out getting away from it all. Yeah, doggone her old hide. Well, come on, let's get these groceries, Lord. <laughs> Fellows really eat, don't they, Judge? Got to eat. They work hard. Where are you going with all those groceries, Uncle Roy? Old railroad camp. Where else? You going to stay here today, Jeff? I thought I'd try to pick up that stray calf from Mrs. Hendricks. Yeah, well, then you look after things, will you, lady? If anything comes up, you know what to do. Hoist the old signal. I know. Well, I better be going. What time would you like supper, Uncle Roy? Oh, I'll we'll be back around sundown. Looks like we might get a little shower. Come on, Bill. Howdy, Clint. Hi, Judge. Brought you some groceries. Well, thank you, Judge. We can get some mail for you here, too. Yeah, a letter for you. Yeah, that's an advertisement from a seed catalog company. Now, there's a waste of time for you. Can you imagine an outfit like that trying to sell planting seed to no boy like me out here in this desert country? <laughs> How you been, Clint? Well, pretty good, except I'm working myself to death fixing up that north fence. Those strays just keep knocking it down fast than I can put it up. Keeps my throat sore just cussing at them. <laughs> Anything you need? No, I reckon everything's fine. Heat keeps this here rheumatism out of my back, you know. Keep me feeling pretty good. Hey, your teeth any better? Well, I'm getting along long since you pulled on last two. Yeah, say that root I broke off every workout. You know that thing come out yesterday morning and I swallowed it while I was down there cussing out them cattle? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be back. If you need anything, I'll bring it to you, Clint. All right, Judge. You get that garden planted and I'll be back and look at it. <laughs> What, Jeff? I think your uncle's a real great guy. Well, I'm glad you think so. Yeah, why? Well, I don't know. I kind of think he likes having you around. Shucks, I thought you were going to say you liked having me around. Oh, I don't mind having you around. Oh, come on, Letty. You can do better than that. Well, I... Say, didn't you say you were going over to pick up a stray calf from Mrs. Hendricks? That's right. What's the matter with her husband? Well, you know his motto. Never do anything today you can put off till tomorrow. <laughs> Besides, he's helping over at the Doyle's ranch. The Doyle ranch? Why, well, Hendricks has got enough to do taking care of his own spread. If I was Mrs. Hendricks, I certainly wouldn't put up with that. What with all those kids to take care of and livestock, and him over helping at Doyle's ranch. Well, Doyle's paying him, Letty. What has that got to do with it? It's too much hard work for Mrs. Hendricks to do alone. It won't be for long. Seems that Doyle's been losing some of his best horses lately. Figures somebody's been stealing them. So he hired a few extra hands to help him track them down. Hey, speaking of Doyle, Jeff, here he comes. Come on, off there. Hello, Jeff. Where's the judge? Over at the railhead. Said he wouldn't be back before sundown. You gonna wait for him? No, we'll get right on with it. Shall we use the windmill? That'll be all right. Get out there and fix a rope. It'll be a pleasure. Wait a minute. What's this all about? Picked up a horse thief. We brought him here to hang him. Anything wrong with that? Sure is. Nobody hangs anybody around here without a fair trial. This fellow's already had his trial. Not that I know about. Well, we know about it. We tried him and found him guilty. That means hanging in this country reigns justice. That kind of justice doesn't go anymore. Never was any good anyway. It's good enough for us, mister. I didn't do it, mister. I didn't steal that horse. Don't let them hang me. Nobody's gonna hang you, not if I can help it. I'm taking custody of this man. I'll put him in jail and you can file charges. You crazy? Hold it, Marengo. Jeff, I know Judge Bean, and I know what he'd say about this case. He'd say, hang the man. That's not true. You're talking about lynching. And if you're saying the judge would go for that, you're wrong. You keep out of this, Letty. I will not. The judge is my uncle. I guess I know how he feels. Now, wait a minute, both of you. I've had 25 head of horses stolen in the last month, and that's one of my horses out there, you understand? So I say we hang him. That's Ray's law, and I intend to uphold it. There's a bigger law than that. That's the one I'm upholding. 
You better step aside, Jeff. This is more than you can handle. Marango, get a noose rigged on that windmill. Yes, sir. I wouldn't try it if I were you. Are you gonna stop me? That's right. <laughs> Oh, did he keep out of it, Letty? Well, Steve, you old horn toad of a Texas Ranger, thought you was up north. I was, but everything's quiet up there. Yeah, we'll be around here now. Even the worst of them calm down when you Texas Rangers are around. That's the way <laughs> I like it, Judge. Quiet. Yeah, I do too. You coming over to Langtree? Let I want to see you. I sure am. Here, let me help you unload. Yeah, I'll take you up on that. <laughs> you Rangers always show up at just the right time. I got a real heavy one here now. <laughs> Chicken feed. What's the matter with you, Aubrey? You afraid to fit? He seems real unhappy, Judge. Yeah, he looks kind of familiar. Oh, I thought so. That's Spade Devlin. You know him? Yeah, I ran into him over to Vinegar Road. He's a gunfighter and a gambler. He's a bad one, too. Hello, Judge. Talking about me? What are you doing around here, Devlin? You know me, Judge. Wherever there's action, that's where I go. Not much around here, though. A bunch of tin horns. How about you, gentlemen? Care for a little game? Not me. I gotta get back to the store. Think you're a little out of my class, Devlin. I'll get my horse and ride back to Langtree with you, Judge. <laughs> How about you, Judge? A little excitement? You never know your luck. I know mine. It wouldn't stack up with the kind of a game you play. Meaning what? Meaning whatever you want it to mean. You still trying to deal law and order out here, Judge? Yeah, still trying. <laughs> That's a lad. The law west of the Pecos, where there ain't no law, never has been. I wouldn't bet on that, Devlin. You might lose more than just your shirt. How are you doing up there? Just about ready. Wrong, Judge. Looks like Letty's got the signal hoisted. Only trouble at the store. Let's roll. Keep an eye on him. around his neck. 
Yeah. Jeff, they're gonna do it. They're gonna hang him. You wait till Judge Bean gets back. You'll wish you hadn't. Oh. Uncle Roy, I'm so glad you're here. What's going on here? Call a horse thief. We're hanging him. They came in here and took over, and Jeff tried to stop them, and they jumped him. You got a nerve pulling a thing like this, Doyle. Now, wait a minute, Bean. This man stole one of my horses, maybe more, so I got a right to hang him. That's range law. It's mob law, and you ain't getting away with it. No! No! You can't get away with this. Now, take it easy, Doyle. We'll keep your prisoner. You come back for the trial. I'll come back with gunfighters. I know where I can get them and get them fast. I'll come back, all right. Come on. The old signal sure came in handy that time. Sure did. You all right, Sam? Yeah, I'm all right. Get me loose. That fellow Doyle seemed real mad, Judge. Think he meant what he said about coming back with gunfighters? Oh, he meant it all right. I know Doyle. He's stubborn as a mule. He'll be back. Hey, we better get that prisoner off his horse. Looks like he's fainted. Going someplace? Yeah, wherever we can find a little gambling action. I'll give you some real action. Your gun for hire? Sure, my friends, too. And then you're working for me. Let's ride. You better drink this. Thanks. Do you feel better now? A lot better. You've been swell, all of you. What's your name? George Hackett. And I want you to know I didn't steal that horse. I bought him. Who from? A fellow I met over in Carson Bend. He even gave me a bill of sale. Yeah, that wouldn't do you much good dangling in the end of a rope. You better lock him up, Jeff, till the trial. I'm willing. I figure that's the safest place for me right now. But suppose they come back with more men. I'm not much good at fighting. For any fighting, we'll take care of it. I'm ready. Oh, he'll be back here pretty quick. We better figure out some kind of reception for him. Like I said I would. I heard gunfighters. That horse thief belongs to me, and I intend to hang him. I thought you was working at being a gambler, Devlin. You know me, Judge. Anything for a dollar. I warned you about getting in the wrong kind of a game. I never saw a game I couldn't handle. Quit stalling, Judge. I want that prisoner. He's probably got him hidden someplace. Get down and find him. No use looking for him. I'll tell you where he is. You try to use force to get him, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. Don't let him scare you, Doyle. We came here to hang a horse thief. Let's get about it. Quit stalling, Bean. Now turn him over or I'll take him. And that won't be pretty, because I'll tear this place apart. I don't think you will, Doyle. Take a look around. Good look. Fire. Keep looking. We're playing against a stacked deck, Mr. Doyle, but the odds are with us five to three. I say we fight. <laughs> I'm calling this court in session here and now. I want to make one thing real clear. If any of you men make a false move, you're in contempt. 
and you'll get plugged. Now, Doyle, if you want to file charges, the court's ready to listen. You'll hold trial right now? I said court was in session. All right. We'll see what kind of justice you hand out. I didn't know we'd get into anything like this. I don't like it. Just start shooting when I give the word. Well, get the prisoner out here. There's time enough for that. Where's this horse of yours stolen? On the other side of the pickles. Hackett claims he bought the horse on this side of the river, Carson's Bend. And I suppose you're going to believe him. Any of you men been on the other side of the Pecos River lately? Not me. What are you trying to prove, Judge? I'll ask a question, Devlin. You sure you haven't been on the other side of the Pecos River? I'm positive. What are you getting at, Judge? Hackett didn't steal the horse at all. You two fellas did. So we stole the horse. <laughs> Judge, you're crazy. He was on the other side of the Pecos River, and you both know it. You're just guessing, Judge. You can't prove anything. How come that cake mud on his horse's leg and on his own boots? The only place around here where you can get water enough to make mud comes from the Pecos River. And you were flashing quite a roll of money over there around that construction camp. Gamblers always got to have a stake, Judge. You sure you didn't get it selling stolen horses? You trying to prove I sold a horse, Judge? Your friend lied about being on the other side of the Pecos River. Looks kind of suspicious, doesn't it? So you think this man stole a horse, but how are you going to be sure? That's not too hard. No? We need more than this to go on. I got Hackett in jail over here. Why don't you go over and ask him to describe the man who sold him a horse? Me? Yeah, you. You've been so positive about this thing. Hackett's over there. He can't see over here. He, he doesn't know these fellows are here. His description fits one of them. Now, wait a second, Judge. Shut up. Now, look here, Doyle. We came here to hang this fellow Hackett, and you're letting Bean talk us out of it. Let's hang this horse thief, and if we have to fight to do it, we'll fight right now. I came here to see justice done. Now, maybe the judge has got the right idea. You men stay here till we get this settled. All right, we'll stay here, like this. Hold it, Letty. We're staying out of this. It'll take care of him with the truck. to talk, Judge. I'm not going to take all the blame. It was your idea to steal the horses. Shut up. Throw him in jail and turn Hackett loose. Come on. You mean it's all over? I don't have to worry about anything? Not a thing. Guys, how can I thank you enough? You don't need to thank anybody. You didn't do anything wrong. Doyle gets his horse, you get your money back. You paid for it. Now I want to say I'm sorry about this. Well, you should be. A man can make a mistake. Well, I guess I'll be going. Just a minute, Mr. Doyle. This court's still in session, and you've got something to answer for. I've got what? Yes, you're charged with making a false arrest, resisting an officer of the law, and disturbing the peace. Now, how do you plead? Well, you can't do that to me. Guilty. Fine's $30. Well, I won't pay it. Come back here. It's $20 more for contempt. Now, you keep on, Doyle, and you'll go in the pokey. Why, you ah! You said it'll cost you double. Guess I'll be moving on, Judge. I've got a job waiting for me. But before I go, I, I want to say thanks. I'm awful glad he could help you, Hackett. Good luck in your new job. Thanks, Judge, and thanks, folks. Goodbye. Bye, Hackett. Good luck. Now that shows you what could happen to an innocent man. He could be hanging from that windmill. Well. <laughs> See, Mama's come home. Probably got worried about her three dependents. But we only have two kittens, Jeff. You're forgetting about the judge. He gets so upset when that cat's away that he eats the cheese right out of the rat traps. 
Now, look here, Jeff. I don't want to hear anything about that. I don't want to even think about it. All right, Judge, but just the same, it's a good thing that cat came home. No more cheese needed for the rat traps. Now, you listen here. <laughs> That's kind of a silly thing to do, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> sound of the thundering herd. It's so real, I can feel the warmth of a friendly word. So I know I must go to the land of the Pecos. There to stay, there to stay, till 